It is not even a competition. Right now, Windsurf is hands down the best AI IDE. It combines the best of both worlds. It's very easy to collaborate with it as a co-pilot, but it's also able to perform a lot of long running and complex coding tasks as an agent. And because of that, I have a confession to make. I am completely addicted to using the platform. And in this video, I'll show you how I've learned to use it to get some insane results. Everyone and their mother has been asking me where my windsurf video is, and I've been saving it till now so that I can have something really, really practical to share with you from my experiences after using windsurf along with Autodev for over 50 hours already. I am not exaggerating. And trust me, I know that windsurf has only been around for a couple of weeks. I really become a super user of the platform and I'm going to show you how to do the same. Now, let me be clear. It is certainly not a perfect platform. I still prefer Autodev or Bolt.new to build my initial front ends, which by the way, they pair very well with Windsurf, more on that later. And you still need a lot of coding knowledge to really make something that is production ready. But it has already saved me hours and hours of time coding, and that gives me the time to build on top of what it creates to make my code really, really high quality. It's funny because one of the biggest arguments against AI coding assistants like Windsurf is they don't truly produce production ready code, and thus you shouldn't use them at all. But I seriously disagree with that because using something like Windsurf to lay the groundwork write some of my tests, document some of my code. That's what really gives me the time that I need to invest in creating the best of the best. So with that being said, let's dive into how to get the most out of Windsurf, overcome some of its shortcomings, and really just build your projects and make them come to life as fast as possible. So Codium, the creators of Windsurf, have done a very good job marketing the platform and really framing what makes it revolutionary. And it can all be summed up in this one big bolded sentence at the top of the Windsurf homepage that says it is built to keep you in flow state. And essentially what that means is you want a cohesive experience with the agent as you're using it to code. So it doesn't feel like there are two very separate processes where you're writing your code somewhere and then when you need help, you go to the agent and then you have to go back to your code. You want it to all feel like a single experience so you can remain in that very focused flow state that is you know, what developers really seek after for productivity. And Windsurf really does that well. So if I scroll down here, you'll see they kind of outline what this looks like working with the agent and the co-pilot and yeah, neat little diagram, but also they explain it in a lot more detail in this link right here. So if you click on learn more about AI flows, they give this timeline here that describes what coding looked like a couple of years ago, way back in 2022, and then what it looks like now with flows. And so I'll go back up to the top here. I want to explain this really quick because I think this really, really neatly describes the benefit of Windsurf and all the other AI IDEs that are coming in this near future here. Uh, but yeah, back in 2022, it was just manually coding. That's what we see right here in this little timeline. And then in 2022, co-pilots were introduced where you had AI help with little parts of your process, like autocomplete in the code editor, for example, or helping you research a little bit before you go on to the next part of your code. And so it wasn't very integrated, but it was still helping a little bit at this point. And then in 2024, we got to agents, which is obviously a huge thing I focus on on my channel, where you have large language models that are actually able to do things for you, like generate code, run commands, interact with your knowledge base, things like that. Well, there's a couple problems with this. First of all, like they say right here, sometimes you have unreasonable waiting periods, you have inconsistent results, and also it doesn't feel very integrated with your IDE when you have this separate place to go to interact with your agent. But now we get to flows, and this is what was introduced in November 2024, this month currently, by Codium with Windsurf. And you can see that the timeline here is completely synced between you and the AI agent. So it's aware of all the changes you're making, you're easily able to see all the changes it's making, and it feels like a very integrated experience where you remain in flow. You don't have the separate place for your code and the separate place for your agent. You're constantly in communication with each other, basically as a pair programmer with an AI agent. And yeah, it is just absolutely phenomenal. So that's the benefit of Windsurf in a nutshell. Now we can dive into how to actually use this platform. So the first thing I wanna share is my general flow for building applications with AI, because I don't just use Windsurf. As I said at the start of the video, Autodev and Bolt still excel more with creating the initial front end. And so I'll build it out in Autodev or Bolt like I'm doing right here, work on it until it gets stuck, because generally it does at some point, even though you can go pretty far. Then I'll export it, bring it into Windsurf, 
add in the finishing touches and then build my backend in windsurf as well because it generally excels at that especially with things like python coding and managing your databases and things like that so that's my general flow i still absolutely love autodev i'm going to keep pouring my heart and soul into the project but there is a place for windsurf as well and that's why i'm talking about combining them right now because that really is a huge opportunity and so yeah i got this little test app that i made as a demo here i can add an item here like yeah it works pretty neat I'll want to extend this a lot, but once I do that, kind of get to the point where it gets stuck, then yeah, I just go over to code, click on download, get that zip, bring it into Windsurf, and then keep going there. So really wonderful combination. The example I'm about to show you, the app I created with Windsurf, I made with just Windsurf for the sake of this video, but just know that this is generally my flow and it works very, very well. The sponsor of today's video is SEO Writing, a cutting edge AI powered tool that simplifies the creation of SEO optimized content. It'll help you create really high quality articles in just minutes with features like keyword optimization, AI generated visuals, automatic web research with citations, and integration with WordPress for easy publishing. And that's just naming a few. SEO writing is perfect for you if you're looking to dominate search engine rankings and grow your online presence. Let me show you really quickly how easy it is to generate full articles in just minutes. All right, let's go ahead and make an article in SEO writing. There's so many options here. So you put in your keyword and your title. I'm doing top 10 skills to learn in 2025 as an AI software engineer. And then the core settings here, you can change so many different things like the model you're using, the article size, you can say what level of reading comprehension you would want for your article, which is really cool. You also have a brand voice. Let me show you this quick. You can create a brand voice where you literally just paste in some of your own content and it'll describe what it thinks your brand voice is, which this, by the way, is super accurate to me. So I have that selected. And then you include any details that you want. Here's where you specify AI generated images and YouTube videos that'll actually go and find for you. SEO keywords, the general structure, uh, external internal linking, super, super cool. And there's so many options for customization here. Connect it to the web for research and citations, integrations, having it published to a website. So many cool things. So let's go back up to the top and generate this. And so I'll be back once it is done generating. And there we go, look at that. We've got our full article here with images and YouTube videos and tables. Everything's formatted really nicely. This is the exact information I told it to put on. This is looking absolutely fantastic. Definitely give SEO writing a try. It is super impressive. I'll have a link to it in the description of this video. And if you use the code COLE25 at Checo, you'll get a 25% discount and it's a nice way to support my channel. All right, so I've already created an application with Windsurf to demonstrate all the tips and tricks that I'm about to show you now to become a power user on the platform. It's just a very basic chat application where the AI responds to the predefined message every time. And I can manage conversation history just in local storage in my browser on the left-hand side here. So really, really neat. I didn't want to build this from scratch because Windsurf is a very intuitive platform. So it didn't really make sense for me to show you how to download it and get everything set up because it's very easy to do so. I instead want this to be a very directed video focused on how to make you a power user on the platform. So with that, we can dive into tip number one. Hopefully this goes without saying, but large language models can get very, very confused when conversations start to get long. And you'll see that a lot in Windsurf where it's doing a really good job, but as you start to ask it for more and more changes, it starts to hallucinate a bunch and you just think Windsurf is an awful platform. But it's actually because the conversation is just getting too long for Claude 3.5 sauna and so the best thing i found to do in these situations where it starts to hallucinate is literally just go up to the top right here click on this very magical button to start a brand new conversation and so you do lose some of that conversation history with that context but this is the best way to just get rid of those hallucinations just re-explain a little bit here it's going to save you a lot of time even though you'd have to do that and it's gonna stop hallucinating most of the time. So definitely try this. It saved me a lot of time. Next thing, a lot of times it is very, very tempting when you have Windsurf build out your app and you see 10 different problems with it that you just start spamming it all in one prompt with all these things that you want it to fix. And so as an example here, let's just say you have all these requirements right here, things that you want it to make to polish things up for you. Now, this is not the way to go about it. It takes a little bit of patience, but it is much better to give it one request at a time. Otherwise, it's going to confuse itself as it tries to fulfill all of your requests at once. Even though it's an agent running behind the scenes with chain of thought, it still messes up when you have a lot of requirements. And so if you take all this 
and merge it down into just one thing, start with that, have it implement it, make sure it corrects itself if it messes anything up, and then move on to the next thing, you're gonna get much better results. And that little bit of patience really pays off in the long run and ends up making the whole thing take less time. One of my favorite features in Windsurf is before it makes any changes, it asks you if you want to reject all or accept all, and you can go within the specific files and accept or reject specific changes. Now the really important thing to know here, this is a big deal, is it actually implements everything in the code. So it's not like you have to accept all or accept individual things for them to be there in the code. And so what you can do is go to your app and test out these different changes. Like right here, what I asked you to do is make it so that this title in the top left just goes to the first user message that I send. And sure enough, it did. So I can test out this feature. And then if I change my mind or if it's not working, then I can go and reject it. So I can go back to Windsurf and just say, oh, this isn't what I wanted, reject it, and then ask it to fix whatever it did wrong. And so you don't have to accept, then test it, and then manually revert if it doesn't work. It's all is handled within the reject button right there. Really, really nice. Along the same lines, it is really important to take advantage of the fact that you can accept or reject specific changes that it makes across different files. The reason this is useful is a lot of times you ask it to do a couple of things. And like I said, you don't want it to have it do too much at once, but if you have it do a couple of things, sometimes it'll get everything right except one thing. And so maybe you want to just reject that one thing before then clicking on accept all. And so within a file right here, let's say for example, I don't like the loading indicator that it added. I can reject this and then go down and reject this change. But then I asked it to do another thing where it adds the title to the conversations and I want that. So then I can click accept and then boom, now it's done. I've accepted and rejected everything. So my accept all and reject all buttons also went away. But that way I got to decide what I brought in and the agent knows what I rejected and accepted. So I can ask it to correct the things that I rejected and it'll know what to do going forward. Another really neat feature within Windsurf is you can call out specific files or functions to the agent so that it knows exactly what you're referring to when you want it to go and edit something specific or look at something specific. And the way that you do that is just with the at right here. So I can say at, and then for example, if I wanna reference my hook right here, use conversations, I can say use conversations, and then it pops up all these suggestions for me, the two top ones being the file itself, and then the use conversations hook definition actually within the file, so this right here. So I can reference the file or the hook itself, click on one of these, and then it's injected within the conversation. So now I can say something like, edit this to make it better, and then boom, it now knows exactly what I'm talking about. So it's not gonna hallucinate and edit the wrong files, which it'll do sometimes. So it's very important in general to give it that kind of direction. Here's the file I want you to edit, or here's a file that I want you to create tests for, that kind of thing. If it isn't obvious already, it is super important to be very specific with the large language model to guide it to get what you really want. And that really applies to using AI in any way, but especially in Windsurf, just because of how much is really happening under the hood, that direction is crucial to get the output you are looking for. And a lot of my other tips have talked about really being specific. But another area that is really, really important is right off the bat, starting the creation of your application, you want to define your tech stack and be very specific about the programming languages and technologies that you want to use to build what you're trying to build. And so I have an example here of a terrible prompt, build me an API endpoint to manage users in my database. This is not specific at all. You have no idea what it's gonna output here, what tech stack is gonna use. Instead, I have a better prompt here. I'm telling it to use fast API in Python for the API endpoint. I'm telling it specifically what I want the API endpoint to do, to change a user's email in Postgres, hosted with Supabase, being specific about the database and even being specific about the schema here. It's important to give it all these details. Otherwise, it's not really a co-pilot. It's just kind of doing its own thing because you barely told it what you want. So very important to be specific, especially at the start. All right, the next tip that has saved me a ton of time and solved a lot of problems is actually to go and use 01 when Windsurf is having trouble with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Because Claude 3.5 Sonnet is fantastic, but I actually think 01 is slightly better at coding. It solves some problems that I can't with Sonnet. And so sometimes when I hit a snag in Windsurf and I really can't seem to figure something out, I'll go over to 01 and I'll even show you my kind of prompt template here. I'll go over to 01, 
paste in my code, just say like, here's my code, I'm trying to do X, Y, Z, but I'm getting this error and I'll paste in the error or whatever the issue is within Windsurf. I'll get the fix for it from 01. A lot of times it does better. I'll go back into my code and correct it. And then because we have this flow state where the agent in Windsurf knows all the changes I'm making, I can then just continue right where I left off with those fixes with Windsurf and it saves so much time. So the best way to make general broad stroke changes to your code base is obviously with the conversation window on the right hand side that we've been using so far. But if you wanna make directed changes and you know exactly which function needs to be updated and you want to reduce hallucinations, there's a better way to do it. What you can do is you can click on the function or class, whatever that you want to change. You can see that I have handle submit selected it in the top middle right here. And I can click on the refactor button. And then there's a bunch of predefined options here, or I can type whatever I want. And it's going to use that as instructions to edit just the handle submit function. So the context is honed in on this specifically. So it doesn't have to search through my entire code base. It's very focused. That's going to give you better results. So do this when you can. And similarly, if I click on handle submit again, I can also click on explain. And so this is another way if you're looking over code that it produced, or even if you import a project for another person and you just want to help understanding a function, you can do this as well. And so now it's explaining to me just the handle submit function. It's doing that very, very well. So yeah, use these to your advantage to help you understand and change specific parts of your code base. Next up, one of the things I mentioned at the start of my video is using Windsurf to document your code is phenomenal and saves a lot of time because as a developer, you do not want to skimp out on your documentation. You have no idea when you're going to need it in the future, when you go back to the project or bring on other people to work on your code base, or maybe you're already working with a team and in that case is even more important. And so yeah, Windsurf helps a lot with that. So you can call out a specific function that you want it to document, or you can just tell it in general to document this file or even the entire project if you want. But the big thing that I've seen it do a lot is it will update your code along with adding documentation unless you tell it to not update the code in any way. And it listens to this pretty well, but it's very important to include this. And so I'll just prompt it right here. Also, it's worth noting that you can add a doc string so I can click on handle submit like I did in the last tip and click on add doc string. But that's only going to usually add documentation right above the function. But sometimes you want to have that doc string above the function, but then also have certain comments within the code as well, kind of like we're seeing right here. So a general overview, but then also calling out how specific features within the code works. And so that's why I generally prefer to do it this way instead of adding a doc string. But just keep in mind that that is available as well. But you can see right here that with my prompting, it added all the documentation without changing the code at all. And that's what you want when you're adding docs. You usually want to do code cleanup and other things as a separate step. Now, one thing that AI has always been very, very helpful with is writing your tests. And with Windsurf, that is no exception. It saves a ton of time, especially doing something that's really annoying for us developers, but you really have to do it to have production ready code that you can consistently test so that things don't break. And you're sure of that when you are making changes. And when you write your tests with AI, they're not always going to work right off the bat, but they can help you set up a lot of that boilerplate, especially when you're bringing in a bunch of libraries like Jest and the React testing library for a front end, or if you're doing things with PyTest in the back end, there's some setup a lot of times that you have to go through documentation to figure out how to get everything working in your test environment. And so it does a lot of that for you, which saves you a lot of time. And then you can go through and really tweak the tests to make it test what you want and to correct any errors that might come up. But it still will save you hours and hours. It is just crazy to me the kind of things that you can build with AI IDEs like Windsurf right now. And it's only going to keep getting better. Imagine this, at some point, probably pretty soon, we're going to have a full agentic IDE running completely locally on our computer, including the LLM. It's going to have full access to everything on our computer. It's going to be able to research library documentation for us. It's going to be able to fully deploy anything it builds. And I'm, I'm sure a million other features as well. And that is the day I am looking forward to. And it's cool to see with tools like Windsurf, that kind of thing is actually within reach, which is just fascinating to me. So I would definitely recommend trying out Windsurf and giving it a shot. I promise that you are going to be impressed. And if you appreciated this video, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.